Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where we discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today we're looking at Pavlov's House from Dan Versen Games. Quick disclaimer that I was sent the game by the designer. Pavlov's House is a tense war game set in the Battle of Stalingrad in World War II for one to two players. You control both the operational side of the Russian defense through card play, as well as squad-based combat in Pavlov's House, a major defensive apartment against the German invasion. But does this split focus split up the fun? Let's find out and get to the list. My number five is a con, and that's the potential for the game to feel repetitive and scripted in some cases. The cards controlling the German attack are split into five waves, and while those are each shuffled individually, you're still going to see the exact same number of tanks each game, the exact same number of infantry coming in the same general space of the attack. Now, this repetition can be somewhat fixed using the optional tactics cards that make the game more unpredictable and more difficult, but the game on repeated plays can also push you to take the same actions in defending the house, like recruiting the leaders as quickly as possible, getting the mortar team at the same time, getting any armor at the same time. It's not a big deal, but you might feel like the game follows similar paths as you play it more and more. But we're contrasting that with a full-on pro for number four, and that's how you earn victory points to improve your performance in the game. The game gives you a score if you survive till the end, which is certainly not an easy thing to do. And that score is based on the number of Germans on the board, the number of defenders in the house, as well as operations you've carried out throughout the game. And these storm group operations are the part I really want to focus on. Basically, once per wave in the game, you can give up a lot of your time and actions and even kill a bunch of your people to leave Pavlov's house and storm one of the German positions in the city. And I love the give and take of potentially sacrificing the integrity of your defense to try to push for a greater victory condition in the end. For number three, we have a mix, and it goes back to something I mentioned in the intro, the operational side of the gameplay. One part of each turn is drawing four cards, each with two potential uses, and using them to set up anti-aircraft defenses, artillery, get resources for the house. And on the one hand, I love the challenge of finding the right balance here, because if you spend too much energy sending supplies and men to guard the house, you're going to sacrifice the strength of the overall army, but if you focus too much on that, you're going to let the house be undefended. So it's a nice, again, give and take in the gameplay. But on the negative side, drawing only four cards, playing three of them, and each of them having only two actions, many of which won't apply or won't be possible, doesn't always feel like you have a lot of choice going into that round. But the other half of the game, managing the squads and weapons in Pavlov's house and fighting off the Germans is a full-on pro for me. This zoomed-in tactical gameplay is where a lot of the game's tension comes in. You generally get three actions per turn, but it never feels like enough to shore up all the defenses you have, shoot all the enemies coming on the board. Add on the fact that a given soldier can either do an action or recover on a given turn, so you kind of lose them for an entire turn, and you have this really nice, again, ebb and flow of how you fight off the Germans, but then recover and lick your wounds. And just the intensity of seeing the German units coming down one of the lanes, having your walls be almost breached, seeing your best soldiers get picked off by sniper fire, it's really exciting in all the ways that a great World War II movie can be. And that's going to lead right into my number one, which can be a pro or con for you based on your preferences, and that's how random and cinematic the game can be. Pavlov's House reminds me a bit of Dawn of the Zed's third edition that I covered earlier this year, in that sometimes randomness can totally destroy your game. Like if the same lane keeps on getting rolled for enemy attacks, or if you just can't stop rolling for the artillery to destroy your walls and stun every guy in the house. But that randomness and that sense of never knowing what to expect is what gives the game its variety and its excitement and its cinematic feel. And that final point is going to take me right into my overall thoughts on the game. If you can get into that randomness, the hijinks and insanity and chaos of war, with unexpected attacks taking their toll in new ways each time you play, then I think, like me, you might really enjoy this game and how it meshes an operational level of warfare and this really tense squad-based tactical level. But if you don't want a few key roles to potentially tank the game for you, or if you don't love the potential repetition from seeing the same cards and tactics used over and over again, then this one might be a miss for you. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.